And we have some breaking news regarding the Bayern Munich job. Here's TalkSport's uh, chief football correspondent, Alex Crook, to break that news. Alex. Good evening. Yeah, I don't know what's more surprising, really. The fact that Vincent Kompany looks like he's off to Bayern Munich or the fact that Craig Bellamy is going to follow him as number two to the <laughs> Allianz Arena. Absolutely incredible, really, <laughs> uh, when you look at the season that Burnley have had. But I was driving back from Manchester this afternoon where I've been speaking to Ahmad Diallo ahead of the FA Cup final on Saturday. I got a message to tell me that Vincent Kompany to Bayern is very close now. Uh, other media outlets have leapt on the story since we broke it around about three hours ago on the TalkSport website. And indeed, uh, my understanding is that Bayern Munich and Burnley in advanced negotiations over a potential compensation package. So Vincent Company uh, from relegating Burnley is off to manage one of the biggest clubs in Europe. So absolutely incredible turn of events, really. Some will text in and just ask the question, how and why? Like, why Vincent Company? Um, again, considering, as you say, the job he did at Burnley this season. Yeah, I've been speaking to a few people who've worked closely with Vincent this afternoon and they're telling me that despite the fact that Burnley got relegated, he is a top operator. He's very professional in the way he goes about uh, his business and of course let's not forget he got Burnley promoted in a blaze of glory last season learned his trade in Anderlecht before that and obviously has that that personality and that aura that a lot of great players have when they step into the dugout so I think that will set him in good stead uh, when he arrives in that Bayern Munich dressing room certainly won't be intimidated uh, by the type of players that he's going to be managing but let's not pretend he's first choice. Kev will tell you, buy and search for a, a replacement for Thomas Tuchel has been scattergun, uh, to say the least. They've been turned down by numerous candidates. Then it looked like Thomas Tuchel might well reverse his decision and stay. They couldn't agree suitable terms on, on a contract extension, so he's still leaving. But you've got to say, it's, it's a massive opportunity for company, but you can't deny it's a massive gamble on Bayern's part as well. It certainly is. Uh, cheers, Crookie. Thank you very much. Uh, Alex Crook, there, our chief football uh, correspondent. Yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I remember, I think I saw one of your tweets, um, Kevin, when you were talking about Oliver Glasner um, and Bayern Munich looking at him and willing to pay uh, Crystal Palace a, a fee to get him out of the club. And obviously he's done so well and I'm happy that he's standing at Crystal Palace. But it does seem quite crazy that a club the size of Bayern Munich, when they decided that Thomas Tuchel wasn't going to be the man next season, you almost felt like, this is a club that surely has something in place. <laughs> and here we are they now. They thought they did. But yeah, right. And here we are now. And it's a surprise. And I'd be interested to see the, re the response from Bayern Munich fans. They're going to get Vincent and company. Well, you've got to look at the timeline here, I guess. They knew that they were going to part company with Tuchel. Why did they announce that so early? Well, the reason was, at the time, the form was poor. And they knew they were going to be asked about it before every single game. How long is Thomas Tuchel going to be in charge? What's going on about your future? So they thought, we haven't got an alternative right now. So let's get in front of the story. We'll say we're going to park company in the summer, but we'll do our best to salvage the season between now and the end. And it nearly worked. You know, they were moments away from getting to a Champions League final. He's an excellent coach in that competition. We know that. And I think there was a an agreement of kind of mutual convenience that the players thought, right, it's in our interest to try and win the Champions League. It's in your interest mm. to do that as well. And their best performances this season by a mile have been in that competition. But in the background, they're like, well, how are we going to replace him? And I think there was too much importance placed on bringing in Xabi Alonso. Mm. And I think what they should have realised was that there was a serious chance he wasn't going to leave by a Leverkusen in the summer. So when that fell through, then they're suddenly on the back foot and then you start getting all of these names. Julian Nagelsmann, could he come back? He had reservations about whether all of the bosses at Bayern, of which there are many, actually wanted him back. So that fell through. Ralph Rangnick they spoke to. He publicly didn't do much of a favour for them because he came out and said, look, they spoke to me. I don't want it. <laughs> Cheers, Ralph. Thanks for that. <laughs> so that was a nightmare because he, he said, look, this isn't a decision against Bayern. It's one for Austria. But it was really embarrassing because then it was so public and he'd rejected them. Unai Emery, they were keen on, but it never got very far. Oliver Glasner, I thought, was ridiculous because it was quite clear Palace were not going to let him go. And he's only just been in the Premier League for a little while. So even though he might have thought, oh, Bayern's a big job and I'd at least like to talk to them, that was never going to happen. So they've actually, in all of the names that we've I've just mentioned, 
this is one of the most interesting because I think the way they will spin it is look at Xabi Alonso, young coach, excellent player, has won stuff, has worked for some of the greatest coaches in the game. They'll say the same with company. Work for Guardiola, mm. one stuff, experienced leader, speaks Ooh, multiple relegation. languages. Yeah, but I think they they'll, would be they'll, pragmatic they'll enough to like know. Like the way Carlo Angelotti deletes his Everton career. <laughs> yes. They'll delete that. Look, yeah. I, th- I think they're pragmatic enough to know he was always up against it with Burnley. Yeah. Mm. And, and I'm not worried on their behalf about the idea that, oh, he didn't change his tactics for the Premier League. I'd be more worried if he did. Because it worries me when coaches... I'm not saying you can't be pragmatic and you can't tweak stuff. I get that. But I think if you've got a central philosophy and then you suddenly just shred that to try and stay up, what then? Because if you're preaching to players week in, week out, this is how, this is how we football. should play. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we just got duffed by Forrest. We're going to chuck it out the window. If you're a player, you're like, well, what is this? What, yeah. What's the actual idea? How here? do you think Harry Kane's going to feel? Right now, um, having gone to Bayern Munich under Thomas Tuchel, with I guess the conversation from Thomas Tuchel would have been the big sell, right? You're going to a European Championship winner, sorry, European Champion winner, and now all of a sudden, potentially, Vincent Company's coming to be your manager. I think you'll be fine with it. I think one, the thing that's really screamed out to me is how professional he is mm. this season. I think everyone at Bayern has really echoed that. I mean, what's interesting is in. In a season where Bayern haven't won a trophy for the first time since 2012, there's a lot of heat to go around. He's had none of it. Mm. Absolutely none of it. I cannot recall a single negative article there's been about him. That takes some doing at Bayern to go through a whole season without. So I think he will look at it and he will say, well, look, this is a guy that has some interesting ideas. It'll all be about how they gel on the training grounds. He's going to have to win over Thomas Müller, Manuel Neuer, Joshua Kimmich. He's going to have to do that. You have to at Bayern. You've got no choice. And the ones that don't, don't last very long. Niko Kovac is a great example of that. Yes, he won stuff. He won the double. But he didn't last very long when it started to go wrong. So he'll have to do all of that. But I think he can. He's a pretty strong character. As I say, he's worked with Guardiola. He's experienced. The Guardiola factor is massive, right? Because he made such an impact over three years at Bayern. They still talk about it now. Some of the players still talk about it, the way he taught them game management, the way he taught them different approaches to games. If you've got a guy that's worked with Guardiola and Guardiola's talking up as a potential Manchester City boss in the future, that's going to carry some weight. So I think I don't applaud the way they've got here. But if they'd gone straight from Shabby Alonso to him, I might have gone, okay, that makes some sense. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.